felt good. Who yeah. hasn't kicked off an intro in a while? Jackson, it's been a long time for you. you, you I think be Kaya's been longer. Yeah, I think Kaya. <laughs> I always forget uh, Kaya even has ever done an intro <laughs> in the entire history of our podcast. You say that, but someone did at least uh, less than me. That's true. It was, it was, Andrew, it was Jackson. <laughs> I did it the most. Well, I, I did it the most, uh, Charlie. I think I actually had the least. Well, welcome to the podcast nobody wants to even do. Apparently, today we have Ethan from H three H three Productions. Thank you. Wow, <laughs> this is why you don't intro, Jesus. I'm Christ. honored and and thrilled by that illustrious introduction. You've met our high enthusiasm Kaya Orson over there, high flying Kaya the Swift, suspiciously Thanks, terse intro. Yes. So, Ethan, uh, give our audience a little intro of yourself for the two people who don't know who you oh. are. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Ethan Klein. I have a channel on YouTube with my wife. It's called H3H3 Productions. We like to goof and gaff. I'm slightly overweight, and I like to make fun of myself about it. Amen. So, Ethan, for all the people out there that don't have a wife or have any female (laughs) companions, what kind of advice would you give to them? Jesus, man. I get fucking quick out the (laughs) gate. Um, It it was between this and masturbating. I thought we could ease into it. I have a lot to say about masturbating, but we can get into that later. <gasps> He's prepared. Yeah, yeah. We'll, oh, yeah. we'll save that. We'll save that. He's got yeah. pages and pages of notes off camera. Oh, my goodness, dude. Years, <laughs> like decades even. Um, Cue cards. <laughs> honestly, okay. Are, are you, you, you actually want like uh, dating advice? Yeah, yeah we're, <laughs> we're all very lonely. Please. Give us your one key advice like if you were giving a speech to you know the kind of people who buy self-help books what would it be Mm. what's on the back cover of your book what's in your ted talk about getting a wife (laughs) man that's so hard to so i mean i i got lucky you know i i got lucky to meet someone who's really compatible with me but i think in in my life I, i was very open to i think a lot of guys are resistant to the notion of trusting someone to that level or or being open to vulnerable to that someone if you will i don't know but i I think you say like afraid of commitment yeah i guess i guess that's how most guys would think about it right afraid of commitment um i was very open to it and like up until my whole life before i met Ela, i i had had several girlfriends but i had always known that they weren't really the right ones for me but when i met Ela, it was like there was never a moment where i was like man you know maybe this is fun for now like it was, there was no end in sight the whole time. And so for me, just no, just knowing that and feeling that, I was willing to, you know, do whatever it took and, and be whatever I had to to make it work because I thought it was, you know, I thought it was right and it was and it was a good thing. And another thing is like, I think generally speaking, a lot of guys probably are too obsessed with with sex, right? And I think a, I think a large part of that is that having sex probably satisfied some insecurity like you you fuck someone you don't care about and then it it gives you a little self-confidence right like hey this person desires me but i think about sex as like fast food right it's like it's okay it's good in the moment but afterwards you hate yourself and you regret doing it and so like you have to just not care about you have to understand how how cheap and useless like promiscuous worthless sex is and 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 I think having a healthy relationship with that goes a long way to being able to commit and, and to a to one person as well. When you realize just how meaningless sex is in exchange for like superficial confidence versus having a fulfilling, like deep, long lasting relationship. And I think that's a lesson every 10 year old on Xbox Live needs to learn after <laughs> they fucked my mother. <laughs> So now uh, send your wife out of the room and give us your real answer, please. <laughs> <laughs> she is standing She is standing right behind me. Ila, what do you think about what I just said? That was very nice. She said it was very nice. She doesn't, <laughs> oh, she doesn't fucking care. That Trust was me. very nice. She doesn't care. <laughs> so speaking I mean, of... <laughs> she's looking for some of that fast food, Ethan. Yeah. <laughs> she lowered the gun. By the way, I still eat way too much fast food for the record. So I'm failing, I'm failing on one end, but doing well on the other. Also, nobody wants to touch my dick, too, so that helps. <laughs> don't don't say that come on that, that's just objectively untrue really are, are you yeah. speaking for yourself oh i'm speaking for all of the 20 plus year old men out there right now okay i do YouTube. yeah all the male all the males want to touch my dick um i do often think about though like a fucking mega famous hollywood hunk 
wherever he goes out, everybody wants to suck his dick. Like that level of temptation is something that almost <laughs> nobody knows. Well, and that's that's got to be really, really twisted to deal with, too. In a way, because uh, imagine when you get old, though, because all of those people imagine being Brad Pitt. And then one day you're going to be so saggy. Nobody wants you anymore. After Every- a lifetime of you getting used to this. It's like the taller you are, the harder you're going to fall. Mm, I think you by the I mean? time Brad Pitt's dick stops working, somebody will have always been wanting to suck it. Yeah, but at that, when they do stop, it'll hurt all the more, I think, for him. I think if I mean, that's where he's spending it, your life all that way. I don't think it'll ever stop. Someone's yeah. going to be sucking his dead dick, dude. <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> People will so. dig up Brad Pitt's corpse to suck that dick. Don't get it wrong. Yeah, he'll be buried with that's ten true. beautiful women. I think... Men do have it much easier than women in that regard because men are always attracted to some degree, even when they're fucking flabby. I, I'm sorry, I just you, you made you, that's a joke, but I, I bet you you could find ten women who would be willing to sacrifice themselves to be entombed with Brad Pitt. Absolutely, <laughs> probably in a pyramid. I, I mean, I'd, I'd do it. If you asked me, I'd have to think about it. <laughs> yeah, it'd be one of those things where, like, well, maybe. Uh, maybe. Are you are you guys all single? What's what? What's going on with you guys? What's what's the love in your guys' life? I, love I have myself. a really girlfriend. Yeah, two of us have girlfriends. Two of us have nothing. Hands. How's it? Who's got? <laughs> who has girlfriends? Uh, myself and Charlie. Charlie, tell me about what's going on with her. How is it going? I mean, it's going pretty well. I mean, there was this, like you said, there's always that one time where you're like, you know what, this might be a keeper. And for me, it was when I was driving down a famous road in the Orlando area <laughs> called I four. And we had just finished a really fun day in Orlando. And as we were driving down this really shitty road, I don't know if you've ever ever been down it, Ethan. It's a horrible road. We were driving down and I saw this innocent sign for just a wholesome restaurant called Boardwalk Burgers. Nothing out of the norm about it. Just a wholesome family joint where some homeless people slap some patties on the foreman. And with my razor sharp wit, I turn to my girlfriend and I say, Boardwalk Burgers, more like board burgers, because those burgers aren't having any fun. And she didn't laugh, much like you didn't. That's when I knew. Wow, dude. So, hmm. That's a, that's a, that's okay. I guess there's always one moment. Mm-hmm. And I, that was when my Gordian knot was cut. Ooh, damn. Nice. I feel that that's, is that, I, I'm assuming that's not a true story. That, oh, as, <laughs> as hard as it is to believe, that is a, a true story. That's not fantasy. Man, that's, that that's, I feel like you're a little bit like George Costanza from Seinfeld right now, giving it like impossibly high standards. <laughs> you think that joke was impossibly <laughs> high? That's the nicest thing anyone so said about you're that. You're saying joke. the fact that she didn't laugh, he should just get rid of her by now. I, yeah, I think I think you can overlook that. Oh wait, are you saying it was unbelievable that she didn't laugh at that joke because it's so good? You, you were saying that you knew she wasn't the one when she didn't laugh. No, 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 no. I knew she was the one when she didn't laugh. That's okay. why I was like, yeah, that makes sense because it's got a bad joke. it. Okay, yeah. you know what? I totally mm-hmm. misunderstood that. God bless you, dude. Mm-hmm. There's no girl. You just wanted to tell that joke. <laughs> there's the no, there's no girl. <laughs> I'm alone. Never uh, girl. Interesting. He loves telling so, that so, joke. so, so, what, what was it about it that the fact that she didn't laugh? You're like, damn, dude, this girl does not laugh at, at when I say shitty jokes. What was it, it about it? it? There was nothing about it. It was just, it's a, it was just a joke that I okay. remembered. It was a real story. Like that joke happened. I did tell it, and she did not laugh. But I just thought about telling that joke. <laughs> that was there was no true love. It was just a, a meme. Yeah, okay. yeah. It was just. You didn't like that joke. That's fine. It was okay. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I smiled. I'm not a laugher. Do you, do, do you guys any relate to that? I, I don't laugh readily. And I kind of, I wish that I did laugh more readily because it's such a charming thing to do. But I just don't, I smile. I smile and I exhale through my nose a lot. Depends if you have a good laugh, though. If you've got a bad laugh, I'd prefer not to laugh. Hmm. I think I laugh at everything. Does it change momentarily for you, Jackson? Like I got a bad laugh today? <laughs> I've come down with a bad laugh, boys. I won't be giggling today. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's objectively that bad laughs. That's true. Yeah, there are. I don't know. I like laughing because it's more entertainment for me. I enjoy laughing, so I laugh. I don't really think if it's going to annoy anybody. That, you know, invariably it does, but there you go. I think it's healthy. Laughter is, is a beautiful, happy thing. Everybody should laugh. Are you crying? <laughs> so emotional. <laughs> He's getting choked up. I'm just so happy right now. Oh, he gets so happy he could laugh. 
It, it's all thanks to the Boardwalk Burgers joke. joke I it took it, it took me a minute to to understand it, but I just yeah, it's a thinking man's yeah. joke. Yeah, it's a thinking yeah, it's man's definitely joke. high level stuff. No, yeah, absolutely. If we could, if we could stop getting sidetracked though on these very mm. important decisions, masturbation, love, laughter. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right back on topic. You've obviously uh, gotten the script. You have so your most notes. most most people. It seems it, you use your predominant hand, is what I understand, right? Mm. Mm. But yeah, yeah. Oh, I use got, right I, hand. Well, unless I used, the calluses make it a little worse. Yeah. Jesus, you must be beating that meat fucking hard as hell, boy. I beat it like my stepchild. Let me tell you. So I actually use my off hand. So that interesting because it feels like someone else. <laughs> no, you know, I, I, I was I don't know that that was my initially my strategy, but maybe that is, you know, maybe that's it. Something to that. Wait, uh, are you a lefty or a righty? I'm a righty and I and I do exclusively with my lefty. If I do my right, oh. it's like it's like there's no sensation at all. <gasps> God, you're describing me. Are we long lost twins? Oh, my God, do we need to drink the left? Dicks? <laughs> the left boys. <laughs> it feels like I'm doing it. <laughs> oh, but it feels like it's me. Oh. No, okay. Th- does this also apply to you? My right hand, you know, dominant hand. I I use it for everything. Excellent coordination. I could not use the left for it. fuck all. I couldn't use a spoon with my left hand or even hold a glass for most of the time. <laughs> but it's excellent at jacking me up. That's off. right. No, no, so same thing. My left hand specialized in one task. And it's <laughs> exactly. Just grabbing my dick. It's like a. It's a hundred percent. I can't use my left hand for anything but fucking pleasing my. Swollen red sausage. Do you keep it under like a singular glove, like Michael Jackson, and then late at night you just go, "It's time," and just pull it out. It's pristine I, and clean, yes. shining in the moonlight. Yes, I, f- I fill it with Vaseline, and I just keep it <laughs> lubed up for that one special moment. Oh, so wait, when you uh, when you go to the toilet to piss, do you use your oh. left hand to hold your dick? Um, no, I don't. How about you? I'm, <laughs> I'm just comparing was, at this point. Oh, I just had a thought. Going back to the relationship thing, connected with masturbating, I thought this was a good tie together. I think it's important for people listening. If you ever feel tempted, go to the bathroom, jerk one out, and see if that temptation doesn't go away yes. immediately. Okay, that's yes. completely correct. Amen. I've always been an advocate for jerking off before dates, bro. Yeah. If before Dirty. any important, fuck that. Before yeah. any important yeah, yeah, yeah. life decision, right. just yes. go jerk one out and see if your disposition doesn't change. Especially completely if you're in correct. court. Mm. Yeah. Just jerk it out under the fucking desk, man. Most people wouldn't even notice. Yeah, you don't know how many times my boner has led to a bad job interview. Why do you think? You gotta make sure they know you're an alpha male. You gotta (laughs) jump up, slam your dick on the table on the judge's gavel, just shoot some turbid gummy blobs of cum in his face. (laughs) Say that's the law. I am the law. That would be amazing (laughs) if law cases were served by like who could come first. He's he's guilty, Your Honor. What? That sounds like Pretty a compelling plot line. I would watch yeah. that movie. I'd watch that. Movie. <laughs> that movie would go for five minutes. <laughs> anyway, where, where were we? I just, I really needed to say that. So Inter- interesting, masturbatory tales from down under. Mm. Well, do what do you? What hands do you guys wipe with? Because I, I, I got a weird wiping habit, my dudes, and it's kind of embarrassing to admit it. Go for but it. I know, this but I know to I'm not you the masturbate. only one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, left hand, head. left hand is cranking it. Right hand is wiping. Right. I, I, I lubricate with poo. Time. Does anyone else lubricate with poo? No, only I, the intellectuals. Who love <laughs> only that. Well. That's right. After I get off the phone with Jordan Peterson. It's a good moisturizer. Uh, Damn it! Don't get us in trouble with his so, hands. Once again, I so unlike how I jerk, I wipe with my right. Okay. Mm-hmm. But here's the strange part, and I've had a conversation like this with my friends, and they acted like I was crazy. I, I lift up my balls and my dick, and I reach under and wipe from, I guess you would say, back to front, and then out out below my legs while I'm sitting on the pot. Wait, right? what? You Ew. wipe towards your balls? It well, I don't, shit on your balls, I don't right? wipe it on my balls, dude. What the fuck? How, why is that so hard to understand? You wipe... <laughs> You no, wipe. Can't you just no, wipe the other way. No, Ethan. I, it sounds like you wipe it all over your balls, <laughs> bro. There's so. You have a chode, my dude. It's like three inches of of free of a free And that's spot. not where you Yoses. store your excess feces, Ethan. <laughs> but you you got it's be, you don't understand because you don't wipe this way. Like you by that why definition. Why do you wipe that way though? What by benefit that, does this? Serve? I don't know. I don't know why. Why are you the way you are? God, God God makes decisions. He rolls the dice, and I ended up as a front wiper. But by <laughs> by your logic, the shit ends up up your own ass crack, and I'm sure that's not that's what happens. That's better than being on your balls, though. Why yeah. I don't I don't get it, shit in my ass crack. 
or on my balls. Because listen, I'm a skilled wiper. I know what I'm doing. I'm a fucking artisan. <laughs> the virtuoso of ball lifting and ass wiping. Well, anyway, I know I knew you guys were all going to be haters, but I told this to a group of one of my friends, and they're all like, "Dude, you're fucked up." But one of my friends, after quietly staying silent, he speaks up and he says, "My dad wipes that way." And then he <laughs> took the heat know. off me. He took the heat off me because everyone's like, "How the fuck do you know your dad wipes that way?" Oh and boy, it, son, come here! I'm going to teach you how to wipe <laughs> like a man. <laughs> the but birds apparently, the bees. hold my apparently balls. it was like a scene out of uh, Friday where his dad brought him in there to fucking lecture him about something while he wiped his ass. That's an alpha play. Oh man! That, ooh, wow. So ha- has play. there ever been collateral damage from your I don't know primitive way of wiping where like maybe you, <laughs> you got some on your legs or something? Because this just this just seems so mechanically. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. Ball never, wrinkles. never, my dudes. And let me tell you what doesn't add up standing up to wipe your ass you freaks oh, no that's, now let that's a whole other topic yeah that that's yeah, a new well, can of worms that one's that's just nonsense. For, that's you have to like barbarism. scoot forward and and put your hand in the inside like the backside like Some the way i do it oh the way i do it is like operation man i don't touch any fucking sides i don't touch the toilet bowl it's all gravy my doggy and the gravy doesn't get anywhere it's not supposed to <laughs> sounds like an anthony sullivan tv infomercial wait so do you guys stand to wipe or not I do. Oh my god! Always end with a wet one. That's what I've learned. Oh yeah, no, I I, I, I stand to wipe. It's the easiest way oh, to do god. it. Oh thank god! I thought I was weird. No. Wait, was... wait! You guys are talking about? Oh, sta- I thought you said Santo, like Santa. <laughs> no, boy. we did. I, I don't know Coming this Christmas. <laughs> it's like a sanitary wipe. No, no, no. no. Stand- well, I, well, I'm on board wow. that argument as well. I always end with a uh, baby wipe just to get. I always off. end with a yeah. wet one. It makes you so, feel so much cleaner. Amateurs, amateurs, you have to shower your asshole after you poop. <laughs> yeah. Bro, how much time do you have? <laughs> I, I told this before on the podcast, but every single shit Kaya takes, he takes a full fucking shower. <laughs> That's neurotic, bro. That's not normal. Well, he also shits while standing on his head. So I mean. He's got a lot that, of problems. Okay, yeah. yeah. So yeah, what yeah, I do yeah. is I try to time my shitting and my showering so I just shit right before I have to shower okay. anyway. So okay. I wipe. Uh, I wipe nice yeah, and clean. And then I, you know, I, I just hold the nozzle to my asshole so to waterboard let me ask you it this. a little bit. <laughs> waterboard it. I like that image. <laughs> um, let me ask you this. What if you have an unexpected shit? Well, then I still shower. It's not like I run out of water. How frequently do you shower? What if you, you shit shower? out in public? What if it's out in public <laughs> yeah, and you sorry? shit? Are you cramming oh, never yourself in, in the fucking? Are you, are cramming you dis- yourself in the oh. sink at Disney World? What happens? <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. How, how disgusting do you have to be to shit in public? Oh, yeah, gross. you oh. don't. Okay. Oh, okay. But it happens. But it, so it have happens. you ever shit in public? Yeah, shit happens, happens, bro. What? What are you? Four years old? That's like how my nephew what? behaves. I have bro, to are you? Poo. You have to be kidding me. Not. I what if you're out of state? Just, well, Jackson gets fucking downright nude nah. and gets out like a rubber fist every time he shits, so his is irrelevant. What the fuck? You've never been to Mexico, had a couple of uh, spicy burritos and, you know, shit your brains out at the airport? Or a single drink of water from Mexico? Or, or just ever eat in public? Like, come on. Everyone public. shits in public. It. It happens. Do not it's buy different. it. It's part well, of living. Is different. You can pee in public, but I'm never going to touch my ass. Okay, let me just get hey, this straight. You don't straight. even need to pee in a toilet. You can just pee anywhere. It's great. Let me get this straight. You're saying exactly. you've never shit in public since you become an adult. Never. Okay. Oh, That's what? fucking weird, my I man. once I once ditched school just to go home and shit and just play games. <laughs> Are you single? Are you the one single or with with a girlfriend? <laughs> oh, I'm single. I don't know how that relates to my public shitting habits. I wasn't gonna meet <laughs> girls in the stall. It's gonna be hard to explain. I don't know how your that. life functions at some points, boss. I, yeah. I can't come into work today. I have to take a shit. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know how your life functions where you cannot go five hours without shitting. Well, five, hey, five hours? What if you're out all Bro. day? What if you yeah, go somewhere real. in the morning and you're not going to be back till that night? What if you're literally anywhere out of state? Yeah. I don't, Jesus, you're like well, Why are you arguing against apparently. this, Jackson? You don't I know. I don't know why we're like angry about it. But <laughs> maybe it's because I don't believe you. I don't believe that you've never shit out, not in your own, or I don't believe you've never shit in public in your adult life. No, I, I haven't. I mean, are, are you... Inc- are you yeah. not believing me because you're including like hotel rooms and stuff? Because that's a different. No, no, it's no, like no, 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 no. Like yeah. at a toilet, you didn't want to shit at because you just had to take a shit. Like sometimes that happens. It's a fact well, of no. life. Look, no, listen. If I had to do it that badly, I would, but I just never had to. I just coordinated mm. good. I guess. Well, I don't also, eat a lot I can understand that. Kaya around. lives off of like caffeine and like sugar I used and stuff. to. Not anymore. Uh, so is your is your diet very regulated? N- well. Up until 
two weeks ago, I used to live on Pringles, chips, and, you know, Mars bars and Coca-Cola. Mm. That was it. So, yeah, wow. I, I used to shit like every five minutes. But now I switch that up and I feel great. No sugar. What are you eating now? Amazing. Blue Apron uh, is what he's eating. <laughs> no. I, fuck, no, I wanted it. God damn it. Blue Apron is what he's eating. We can all say it and I'll splice it in. Blue Apron is what he's eating. I eat Blue Apron. I'm glad you asked. Why do you eat Blue Apron, Kaya? Well, tell them why I eat Blue Apron, Andrew. Well, I think Kaya eats Blue Apron because of the convenience, the variety, the flexibility, and the high quality found only at Blue Apron. Uh, If I were to reach into a hat filled with adjectives on little pieces of paper, I would pull one out, and as dictated by Ethan right now, it would say... Relatable and real. I I have a competing sponsor. (laughs) (laughs) That's, That's what right. it said in that hat. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long adjective. <laughs> so, for but the, the important the important thing about Blue Apron is for eight weeks they are teaming up. That's with why Whole you're 30. fat, by the way. <laughs> they are teaming up with Whole Thirty to bring you delicious recipes. The menu will feature two Whole Thirty approved recipes each week. You can kickstart your new year with Blue Apron and Whole Thirty. Now, Blue Apron Let is treating. The official podcast listeners to $30 off your first order. And that's so important. They highlighted it in yellow for me. If you visit blueapron.com slash, what is it, Jackson? Official. So check out this week's menu. Get $30 off your free shipping. No, $30 $30 off and free shipping. (laughs) They highlighted it twice and I fucked it up. At blueapron.com slash, what was it again, Jackson? I didn't hear you. Official. Great. Blueapron.com, a better way. Wait, before we go, can we tell them what, what the uh, January monthly recipes are? Andrew? If you feel like it. All right, let's go in Jack order. We've each got one uh, one recipe. Sure. So my one is Whole30 approved seared steaks and warm lemon salsa verde with roasted broccoli and sweet potato. Take it away, Andrew. What's Mine yours? Whole30 whole registered copyright approved chicken and kale <laughs> orange salad with spicy tahini dressing. Go, Charlie. Wow, I, I drew the, the best stick in this hand here. Mine is spicy pork and Korean rice cakes with baby bok choy. Mm, that sounds nice. Yeah, I that have sounds delicious. I vegetable, that, yeah. vegetable fried rice with togarashi peanuts. I don't even Great. know what togarashi peanuts are, but I like them. He invented the Nintendo. So you'll get <laughs> pre-portioned ingredients that can be cooked in under 45 minutes delivered to your door. Blueapron.com slash official. official. And, and Ethan was part of that ad and we have it on record that he was a part not of associated it. not endorsed, <laughs> but he was not but he was a part of it. <laughs> literally i don't even know who or what you're selling buddy but i don't want none of it you're the one who got us this deal <laughs> yeah Ethan was like i i love blue apron so literally. much i'm gonna hook up the official boys literally before the show he was like oh god i just tried some of that pork from blue apron so fun. never heard of that company <laughs> no you have yeah, now you're you're an accomplice now. Send me some of that uh, fucking pork bok choy. From where? I'd be. I'm sorry, Ethan. I can't do that. I'll be gobbling all of it up. Too yummy. Okay. All right. Damn. Shit. I really wanted some of that. So speaking of delicious handcrafted home meals, whatever, <laughs> Ethan, I really want to know about your voice acting for uh, Payday Two. Oh. Cool. And how that went, because I saw that you were literally just plopped right in that. And I, I no offense to you, I thought it kind of unusual that this game nope. about robbing banks and wearing masks is like featuring <laughs> e-celebrity H3H3. Yeah, I so think I just, for most people, it was it was really a strange pairing, but... Yeah, so um, I'm just wondering how that this, went and your experience and anything you can Yeah, tell of us. course. So Starbreeze, Overkill, those are the companies that, that make it. And their marketing director is this really awesome dude named Almir. And we had hooked up around the time where we were being sued and we had made a video being like, man, we're going to be fucking bankrupt and whatever. Um, and he, that it was a long, long time ago when we made that video because the lawsuit went on for over a year. So at the very beginning, he reached out and he's like, hey, man, we want to, we over here at, uh, you know, Payday 2 want to help you guys out and find a way to support you. And we're like, cool. So we had been scheming to do this collab a way that they wanted to do to support us for, you know, over a year. It just took forever to get it out the door. So a couple months later, we flew out to Sweden and we did like a, this thing they do called Starstream and announced it. It started as a April Fool's 
like joke um like a year before it actually came out and everyone i guess there was a really good reception to it so they were like hey maybe it's not that crazy of an idea and i mean the game was was entering basically the end of its life cycle so so they're like you know f- whatever fuck it whatever whatever we can do to breathe new new life into this game so we flew out to sweden had an awesome time there there was not as contrary to what a lot of people say there was not a bunch of people being raped by muslims at least not in my <laughs> periphery it was very peaceful and nice um <laughs> I, I only say that because we made a vlog there and like so many fucking inflammatory, awful comments like shit like that. I was shocked that there was this whole thing about Sweden. But at, at any rate, I digress. Um, yeah, it was super fun. The company, everyone there is super nice. They just wanted to be supportive. And so we came back to L.A. And a couple months later, still, we started doing or when we were in Sweden, they were taking photos of us and taking our measurements and stuff so they could put us in the game. And then we came out to L.A. We did like 10 super long voice sessions because there's so many lines in that game. There must be like several thousand lines that we did. And then we must have spent like 20 or 30 hours in the studio. It was it was grueling, man. It was super, super intense. But um, it was an awesome experience, like actually doing professional voice acting and working on that capacity on a, on a really high level game. So it was super fun. I know it was Is really f- unexpected. Yeah. Is this the first uh, voice acting that you've ever done? Yeah, for sure. Um, so did you find it difficult to get into that kind of that mindset that you have to act? It's harder than I thought it would be, for sure. And I know Ela had a really hard time with it because she's just like naturally very shy and introverted. And so at first we did one session and she was like, there's no fucking way that I'm going to be able to do this. And she was just like, just take me out of the game, just do Ethan. But they they were super supportive, and they're like, you know what? No, 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 we need you in the game. So they got her a voice acting coach. And um, by the end of it, she scared the shit out of me, dude. She was she stole the show, man. She was so good at it. So how much how much of it was like you have to go by the script, and they need these certain lines, and how much of it was they really just wanted to inject your you know own flair into it? So it was like. Well, it all started from a script and they're like, you know, do, do whatever you want with it. But it was 90% on script. And then we did a couple of sessions at the end where they're like, just, you know, go off the rails and say whatever you want. But it's because it's so drawn out and time consuming, it's really hard to get creative because they want you just to be blasting through lines, like with no pause in between, you know? And, and if you take, if you actually take your time and get really creative with it, which we tried doing, it can end up tripling the amount of time that it takes of already super long recording. So it was a lot of, of script and some of the stuff is like, well, I would never actually say that. So you had to kind of change it on the spot, but it was most certainly hope you would not say something like let's rob this fucking bank or or something like that. (laughs) Oh, I said a lot of shit like that. Well, you'd have to rob a bank after a stay in Sweden. Did you notice how expensive it is? I was, I came from New York at the time and I was actually surprised that it wasn't as expensive as I thought. Mm. Last time I was there, like a little bottle of water will cost you a pint of virgin blood in your firstborn. Oh yeah, no, they didn't ask for that. Just like three bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Basically it's the same diff- thing. It's a, it's a different time back <laughs> isn't, then. Isn't that a thing? <laughs> That's isn't not that turkey a- currency. Isn't that a thing though with uh, Scandinavia and some areas like that? Like things that in America you they usually like get for free. Blood. Well, they do love that. They drink it up like hotcakes. But no, like things that in America you kind of get as part of the service, like bread and water, are not free at all, and they're actually like four or five bucks everywhere you go. Oh. Wait, you get water for free? What are you talking about? Yeah, well, are you? What are you referring to? Like at a hotel or, or a flight? Or <laughs> like at you restaurants. Get water for free. Yeah. Oh, like at, at restaurants. Like at restaurants yeah, yeah. And stuff where like <laughs> so you know. In America, yeah. every restaurant, it's like, have some free water yeah. or whatever, but any, so, anywhere there is not the case. It's you still very, need to buy a bottle bottle of water, though, like packaged water. It's but a very then, European like thing. Bucks. So, yeah, yeah if, if you ask for water there, they'll bring you like a $8 bottle of glass Avion or something. And if you're like, no, 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 I want still water, they'll like go to the toilet and fucking take it out of the tank. <laughs> Fish it out. For you. They don't flush it first either. Oh, no, mm, no. My favorite. They want you to know that they know. That's soupy water. So 
I, I, there's a question I've been wanting to ask you, Ethan. So you're big friends with hip hop's only good artist these days, Post Malone. So when can we expect you on one of Post Malone's songs? <clears throat> That's pretty funny. Um, the first time I hung out with him, or maybe it was the second time, we went to a studio and we were fucking around a lot. I don't know, man. Probably never, to be honest. Um, <laughs> he's like at, at first we. He's gotten way too big to put my dumb ass on his album. You know what I mean? Like, I think when we first met, it was just all goofs and there was nothing at stake. But now he's like the one of the biggest artists in the world. So I don't I think most of his most of his fans don't know who I am now at this point. So but one thing that I would love to do is and and I know Austin does, too, is to finalize the so flow like Antonio. I don't know if you've heard that little fucking remix we've done. We want to make a. I made this video with him and we were just goofing around. We ended up making this song called So Flow Like Antonio. We were goofing on So Flow Antonio. And we actually got in touch with So Flow since then. And he said he wants to be in the music video. So that would probably <laughs> end up being something for H3H3, not his album. But if I had to guess, I'll probably never be on his album. You don't think there's any career in rap for you? <laughs> you know what, man? I, I honestly, I don't want to be another YouTuber trying to rap, if I'm being honest. You've never written out like a rap love song or anything like that? A rap ballad? No, not yet. I'll, not I'll yet. take this chance and ask Charlie. I, I don't think you've ever really elaborated quite why you hate rice gum. Would, would you like to? Do you well, like rice out of nowhere. Oh, yeah. No, I, I mean, for like the last two years, None I've stayed do, no. firm that he's my least favorite person on the site. Interesting. It's, it's not like a personal grudge or anything. I just, he's not entertaining and he's just a douchebag. <laughs> I, I think more so than the Paul brothers and all the other horrible people on the side. I just find him to be the most insufferable. I mean, that's definitely a defensible position to take. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I just find nothing he's done to be of any quality beyond like elementary school. Like his rapping is juvenile. His content and quote jokes are awful. And he's just well, a bad person. Charlie, I don't, I don't understand where your hate comes from. I mean, I'm just looking at his channel right now and his uh, quality video from a month ago called Can I Touch Your Butt? Got him! Uh, 5.6 million views with a peach emoji as well as haters. a woman's Haters, watch out haters. Exactly. I don't see what the... What is the problem here, Charlie? What? I guess it's just my poor taste. In <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> followed by I a guess. video a few weeks later called Why Is She Twerking on Santa? With the same <laughs> peach Why is emoji... She? With with a big Fuck. butt, the same peach emoji, and a surprised face emoji. I don't. What is the problem? I'm we so need to get rice gum on here to clear this up. For and us. then three days ago, three days ago, you know, this man is consistent with his track record. Can you massage my booty? Where a woman's butt is not only in the thumbnail but is replaced by said peach emoji. Mm, Come I'm on, I'm sensing a I'm sensing a theme here. And Andrew. also, I just noticed there is sweat drops coming out of the booty. So this thumbnail, I don't think was very properly thought through because this is she looks like she's drinking it. <laughs> this looks right, a little uh, unsavory. I will say that I think it's easy to underestimate how young his audience are because he he shares basically the same audience as Jake Paul, right? And I mean these are like eight to twelve year olds. So oh the, wait, they're not they're not they're not Jake Pauls, are they? Yeah, Rice gummers, yeah, gum boys. Yeah. I, yeah. Thought they were, oh, yeah. I thought they were warring factions. What's I'm just saying. I'm just saying that like gum boys are the same age as Jake Pollers. Ooh, Damn. wow! Yikes! You heard it here first. Ethan hates rice gum and kids. That's I, right. That's always a cop out. I don't believe it. I think that's a conspiracy theory that every mm -hmm. channel that just sucks so much ass has to be so popular because of children. I think it's, it's just there's no, no way it's not children. No, 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 Kaya, it's not just children. It's the gap of our age. It's kids, and then the people around our age hate it. But then adults go, look at this wacky little youngin doing this stupid bullshit with his no, friends. Don't. It is kids. I don't think, yeah, it's I kids, man. It's, no, it's kids. Well, no, it's, it's, kids. It's, it's, it's not just kids. Think about it this way. Say you, Surely say, not just, but majority, vast majority. Yes, people don't understand. Yeah. The vast demographic, like, I'd say 70% of the people who use YouTube on a daily basis are under the age of 16. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I agree to that. I completely agree. I consent. <laughs> I concur. <laughs> so, I mean, it is. It is kids. It's kids. It's not a conspiracy theory. It really is kids. I don't want to believe I it. mean, kids run the fucking internet. <laughs> Why don't I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, what more proof do you need? Why is the current big trend literally eating Tide Pods? 
Oh, is it God. though? No, no. I've seen more memes about that than I have seen no, any videos of anyone eating doing them. It. You oh, know what? Dude. It's oh, because maybe. YouTube's removing videos. But I, yeah. I was like, I was like, what the fuck is this? So I go on YouTube and I'm like, Tide Pod Challenge, and all the videos that come up have like five, six hundred views because YouTube's deleting them all. And I swear to you, man, I just saw people fucking. I saw one dude who didn't have Tide Pods, so he just took a cup of fucking laundry detergent in his mouth. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that kid I was is my like, hero. What the hell is this? That's efficient. That's efficient. Fuck yeah. Brain he knew soldier. it wasn't food. He just—that's just a—that's just, just a death video. He knew it wasn't food, as opposed to the Tide Pods. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, isn't isn't that where the meme started from? They thought that Tide Pods were food or some no, shit. That's they so didn't be... think they were food. The whole point is they look like candy, so they're like, "Oh, forbidden snacks! You don't are, eat it. It looks it, good, but don't eat if it." You are three years old. No three-year-old would even eat a Tide Pod. How is this even possible? It's not three-year-old. It's a. It. It's mainly like. And he, it's like it's the it's the gumballs or whatever they're called. I think, it's like, I yeah, think you dangerous. misunderstand <laughs> three year olds. If you gave a three year old gum, these uh, Tide Pods, they well, definitely I don't stick think I agree. Them. No, they, but mentioned. they would not eat them. There's a huge difference between putting it in your mouth and swallowing. I ate coins when I was three. Jackson, have you tried? All right, wait your, a minute. Je, no, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. Jackson, you have a Nintendo Switch, right? Yeah. Have I you did. tried licking the cartridges? I'm not three. I did. <laughs> no. I have. Yeah, no, I, but, I did. Jackson. I ate it. I passed it. I washed it out. I put it in. It works. No, this is not a joke. <laughs> Nintendo actually what spray game was sip. It? it was Zelda, obviously. Oh. Go, go, Kai. What were you saying? Nintendo sprays a bitter end on the cartridges so children yeah. don't eat it. So they taste absolutely disgusting. So children is, don't actually even bother to eat them or lick them. It is true. But these yeah. these literally look like candy, though. They look so bright and delicious. Yeah, but I, when it starts burning your mouth like horse shit on fire, I don't think the, you're the, the damage is it. done anyway. Yeah, well, okay. They're not going to. I do uh, recommend yeah, everyone yeah. listening to go lick their Switch cartridges. Please do. It's interesting. <laughs> That's actually a really good question that Jackson brings up. Why the fuck do they color them to be so bright and appetizing? I think that's the. I think it was started as a troll to actually try to get people to eat it. I don't think it was serious. And then, what, do you, what do you want the detergent company to do? Make them all black and disgusting looking? Like yeah, you wash it, your clothes with this disgusting pile I guess of dog that makes shit. Sense. It's the same reason why like everything looks colorful and nice because people don't want like rust buckets just sitting around that growing fucking fungus on it. All I know is I'm suing them. I didn't eat it, but I thought about it, and I think that's damage. <laughs> I thought about doing it. I have a case. In, in my mind, I ate it, and that's a goddamn felony. I felt Emotional irpy in labor. my head, and when I thought about throwing it up, I just I was disgusted. I think I have a case. <laughs> Ethan got a taste oh, of yeah. the legal system. Now he wants more. Oh, yeah. oh my going God. Back for Trust me, two. dude. I would do anything to avoid the legal system. Like, I, I, would, uh, <laughs> I would suck Brad. I would suck Brad, Brad Pitt's decap or fucking decomposing dead cock to avoid being sued again. I thought you were gonna say DiCaprio, also a good choice. Brad Pitt's Brad Pitt's DiCaprio's cop. I was trying, I was trying to tie it back in, you know, to the old joke, but I kind of stumbled over That's it a, a little good bit. One. So, Ethan, we take uh, questions from our patrons, and somebody called Dot Exe is asking: Now that the court case is done with, how is it affecting your content, if at all? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. First of all, they, shout out to everyone supporting you guys on Patreon. God bless them. I love Patreon, and I think. I shout you guys out. Actually, I'm going to support you guys on Patreon. Shit, I should do that. I'm going to pledge you guys $5 right after this shit finishes. Oh, thank you. Oh, Ethan. That's so sweet. I'm I'm putting five on the table right after this. Damn. Be cool like Ethan. You really don't have to, but (laughs) thank you. Actually, actually, after we won that lawsuit, it was... um, Well, it was weird. We kind of stopped posting videos. I took like a hiatus, but it definitely empowered me a lot. To before the lawsuit, I was super careful and super paranoid and super conscientious, like over over cautious about how I edited my videos. And I'm so thankful that I was because ultimately we got sued and it's what saved our ass. And I learned a lot about the limits and kind of what you can do with other people's footage that still constitutes fair use. As I came to understand it, we were like way, way, way in the green and... um well, for one, I, I'm still very cautious as I was, but definitely now that it's I've been like exonerated and I know the limits and the legal limits of fair use, I definitely don't worry as much about the um, about about getting in trouble for it. So in a way, I, I'm just do, I'm doing the same thing I was, but it's 
I was always concerned about it. And somehow my, my greatest fear came true that some asshole ended up suing me for copyright infringement. But now it's, it's a huge load off. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Sometimes now there's just, a precedent set too, right? Now you've kind yeah. of paved the way for, for that, at least in yeah. the legal system setting. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the only example before us was William Ray Johnson versus Junkin Media. And he, I think what happened was they had closed, they had come to some agreement, but it was definitely not looking good for Ray William Johnson. His lawyers had fucked up somehow. But I, I actually don't, I think his content is way less fair use than the way we do it. Um, but it, it was it wasn't a very complete ruling that one, and so up until that there was really no precedent. So now, I in my opinion I think fair use is is really well protected now after that lawsuit on YouTube specifically. Yeah, that's I think that's fair. Tell that to the WWE that still daily takes down my Birth of the Dragon video, but I keep putting it back up. Um, you should wait. So tell me about that a little bit. Well. Br- I don't know if you know it, Ethan, but Birth of the Dragon was 2017's biggest stinker. Just a real stinky ball sack of a movie. I gave it a 5%. I'll spoil it. The, almost immediately, the WWE blocked it worldwide. I fought it. I got it back up. About five days later, they blocked it worldwide again. I didn't know you I, could do that. I thought you lose and then that's it. No, because they did the, like they're too dumb to take it down, so they blocked it. Uh, which made it very easy to appeal. Well, no, with- that's a that's a legal loophole for them because if they block it, they're not liable for a wrongful DMCA. Uh, well, maybe I'm the fucking idiot then, but it, it made it easy to fight, and I just kind of became this. Well, fun's the wrong word, but this eventful tug of war between us. Your movie sucks, Adam. Gave me like a like a copy pasted what I should say to them. So every time they blocked it, I would just copy and paste that <laughs> until the most recent one where they must've called in like their ringer or something. Cause now it's blocked <laughs> worldwide by like a totally unrelated <laughs> entity that I've never even heard of before. It's like a double a, no, it's like a double a CX media or something. You yeah. found the shadow company. You're, so. you're taking apart the Ponzi scheme. <laughs> What's, yeah. What is the status of it now? It's blocked worldwide. I, 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 <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't want to recopy and paste it. I, I, okay. I mean, if it's a, if it's not a big deal to you, you can leave it. But no, honestly, you. It's. Ugh, I just think it's fucked up. That. Oh, it's very. It's very. It's fucked just up. so fucked up that these. If you're companies, listening to the, if you're listening to this, Vince McMahon, the commissioner, I will stone cold stunner that ass. Bro, don't. You'll go straight Trump on his ass, bro. Oh, I'll fucking drop it. <laughs> I'll drop that ass down low hard. Well, if if. If I know it keeps happening to people like Adam, for example, I know he gets fucked with a lot. And I I think it's about time that there's a class action lawsuit against these people who abuse their powers because there's precedent. I mean, it's in the law that you can't you can't abuse that. So these guys are fucking around and abusing their power. And le- it is illegal. Oh, yeah. But I mean, who has that kind of money on YouTube right now that would be able to take down a titan like Vince McMahon? Jake Paul. I mean, the I know Pulse, Vince McMahon isn't actually the United. face of the... Well, I mean, I don't think Logan Paul's tangling with the <laughs> WWE over Birth of the Dragon. Nah. <laughs> um, yeah, Vince McMahon would burn your house down probably. I wouldn't recommend it. Oh, 100%. Him, yeah, him personally. He'd come yeah. up and find it, find it on Google he'd bring, Maps. He'd he's bring the whole God, it. Yeah, he'd bring the Hardy Boys and everything, man. That'd be like a Triple H run wild fest on me. They'd put you Do through you a watch wrestling? Table. I did when I was a kid, as most kids did. There's a lot of... A, I don't want to like rustle any jimmies, but I just don't get, I don't understand it. I mean, like for adults, for adults, there's a lot of adults that get all riled up and they love that shit. But you know, God bless you. Don't, you know, but who am I to say what what you can enjoy? I just, I didn't even enjoy anything. So who am I to criticize? I mean, the best, go ahead, Charlie. I was just going to say, I read like a super insightful piece on that from an avid wrestling fan who just said, yeah, we know it's not real, but gives us an excuse to drink and gives us a little show. I mean, God yeah, bless. the the best way I've heard it rationalized is it's theater. You know, it's like going yeah, to see I a play. Yeah, I know theater isn't real. Yeah, it's it's like going to see a play, what? except they have choreographed stunts. It's really all it is. Uh, well, I mean, okay. yeah, I, don't, I don't think anybody ever made oh the claim God, they I'm getting a loved call. for Either, reality. Can you take this in the other room? I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> just getting a call. <laughs> no worries. That's the lawyers. They heard. Fucking Vince McMahon. Ethan, you can't say wrestling isn't real. It's <laughs> What do you mean he's on a Blue Apron sponsored podcast? <laughs> yeah, 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 dude, don't joke around. Those these guys bleep that, bleep that. Yeah, you better you better yeah. bleep that out for your for your sake because you mentioned 
a competitor. <laughs> oh, You're right. There's only Blue Apron and Infinity. No, I swear There's to God, no. I swear to God, bleep that out because these, these guys don't fuck around, man. They'll be like, I need a make good. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. All right, I don't want to piss off the WWE <laughs> and the fucking. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Oh my God, now he's done it. Cut again. this whole section. All right, real, Jackson. And, and, and cut. Not Blue Apron. You can just bleep it, no? Cut it's and fun. bleep it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Bleep I'll, it, I'll then cut it, just yeah. to be sure. Bleep it, cut it, put it back in, and then bleep it twice. Then reverb it. Er- erase the whole file, reshoot the whole podcast. Yeah, auto tune oh. it as well. Ethan, several people now have asked about your magnificent fupa. Oh, yeah, what's that about? Would you like to tell what? us about it? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, sure. I'm overweight. <laughs> Kaya, do you not know what a fupa is? No, I do. I just I don't know why they're so obsessed with it and why no. they need details and updates on it. Well, it's about it's about uh, I will say about forty three inches in width. <laughs> it's about sixty eight in uh, millimeters in or centimeters in <laughs> diameter. Um, take measurements every morning after my eggs and bacon. I don't know. It's it's I'm fat, dude. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a mean question to ask really? somebody. Jesus, I, Jesus, I'm sorry. There was just a barrage of people going. Oh, well, well, how's this fupa? Is he fatter than no, Aaron? Fine. Who it's, has more chins? I mean, that's that's the audience running with every joke. Like Ethan could be on his show and just be like, "Yeah, I've gained a couple pounds," and then the whole audience will be like, "Wow, what a fat ass! He's so massive. Roll him out um, of the studio." <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sensitive about my weight. I'm fully aware of my monstrous status. No, I mean, well, that's, that's good. good. You should be able to you know, laugh at yourself. Yeah, it's, I mean, well, the thing is, I'm always talking about like, oh, man, today's it's going to be FUPA loss year. And then I just get fatter and fatter. So <laughs> I just I, I have like a fat guy disease. Like I, I have a problem with food. You know, I, I, I empathize with like really big people who can't stop eating it away. Obviously, it's not that ba- that bad, but it's like, mm. Man, for someone who used that fat food, fast food analogy, I cannot put down a fucking hamburger. Do you uh, exercise in any way? Um, I go through phases, but for the most part, not regularly. It's hard to find that schedule. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. problem with food is that it's really the single most Delicious. insidious addiction. Yeah. That, yeah. Not that necessarily, but the thing with addiction is like if you're an alcoholic, for example, you can stop drinking and you don't ever have to drink again, but mm-hmm. you can't just stop eating food forever. You still yeah. have to eat food and you have to just eat it in regulated portions, right. whereas that isn't true for any other addiction. So people who That's are a really good point. It, I don't know. It's I like, feel yeah, bad for them too. You know, it's when you're angry, of course, you make fun of fat people. It's a fun thing to do, but the more you really think about it, it's. It's fucked up. Nobody wants to be that way. Nobody wants to be oh, six hundred sure. pounds, even if they, even if they live in denial and tell you it's so. Well, well, I'm curving, f- fierce and curvy and awesome. And no, nah, dude, you're sad. Oh yeah. yeah, all the oh oh man, I totally agree. All these like healthy at every size shit is just like give me a fucking break, dude. You mm-hmm. hate yourself, and you're just like you're yeah. you're trying to change the objective reality instead of just fucking yeah. losing weight. Do you think that if you did find a way to work in that workout schedule and actually adapt how you do to being physically active that you'd want to stick with it and maybe look into getting into good shape? Or are you I mean, I've been to... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I would. I've I've been I've been skinny and healthy and physically active before, and I could tell you right now and everyone listening, I'm way happier, way more confident. You know what I mean? It's just It's fucking it's a bitch, but like, yeah, man, it's Have it's you... way better ever tried giving it up in smaller steps like i have recently because i i've gained like 14 pounds in the last two months it's whoa that's where i jesus uh, wow that's, a, that's quick man oh Kai, look at that's fucking quick. calorie crusader over here kaya you got to speak a little louder over all that fluff dude <laughs> yeah well who's that port <laughs> grenade talking right now oh god <laughs> a lot. all i hear is whale sounds guys Wait, are you, are you, no, wait, but seriously, are you okay? That's a lot of weight to gain in like a short amount of time. I don't <laughs> no, mean, I'm not like kidding. I said, no, it's the thing is I moved to Germany and they just have so much delicious fast food and snacks. Oh, and sugar. So for, okay. It's just said, temp- temptation. Yeah. For the last two months, like I, I've lived on Mars bars and that kind of stuff, but mm. now, you know, I'm cutting mm. down. I started working out again, but the thing is it, just giving up sugar makes such a big difference in how you have, have you had. Have you had deep fried Mars bars yet? No. And I don't want to get him back on the wagon. With just that sentence, Kaya's relapsing. 
<laughs> I know. I just, I just gained five pounds just hearing you say that. Really? <laughs> no, we don't have like a disgusting American fat fuck food here. It's just regular fast food that in Turkey I never had. So Bro, you that ha- is in oh, you're world. Turkish. Yeah. yeah. So he lived off dust for a while. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> like I, uh, I spent some time it. in Germany. That Turkish food, the uh, Dunar kebab. Mm. Oh, it's delicious. Forget about it. A little fucking yogurt, shaved meat. Forget about it right now. Five euros. Forget Does it. Does that mean it's bad or good? Forget about it, dude. <laughs> it's absolutely. <laughs> it I don't know what that means. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Just forget it. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's by far the best street food I've ever had on the, on the planet. It's it like, truly and it's cheap. Is. It's just unbelievable, dude. But oh yeah, my you, god! Even I, you know, for for my entire life, I've had a problem with sugary shit and caffeine. Basically, I, I just could not give up Coca Cola and coffee. I've been there uh, too. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you have anything just the worst? Yeah. Do you have anything specific you cannot give up, or is it just all junk food? You know, actually, I don't. I don't really have a junk food problem. I don't eat, drink, or eat very sugary stuff very frequently. It's mostly just, I think I overeat a lot. Like, Mm -hmm. if I sit down to eat a meal that I am really enjoying, I have a hard time not eating every fucking thing in front of me. And in America, you know the portions are way too fucking big. Like, one, you sit down at a restaurant, and the portion's like 2,000 calories, you know? Mm -hmm. I think overeating is my biggest problem. I, I used to have a huge problem just like that too, where it the only way I turned it around was by physically stopping myself from eating. Mm-hmm. Like I, I would be kind of full, but my brain would still be like, no, you can eat a bit more, but I would have to, you know, just right. actually catch myself and say, no, don't eat all of it. Don't do it. I think, I think that's my biggest challenge. Mm-hmm. It's a hard barrier to overcome. You, do, do you, you never had weight problems, Charlie. Oh my God. Yeah. Back in high school, like pretty really? much my whole life up until junior year of high school, I was mad overweight. Oh yeah. Really? <laughs> mm-hmm. I think you're uh, pretty jacked now, my dude. Oh, that was sweet. Jackson, oh, have you ever blushing. had weight issues? Cause I think no, all of us, uh, except man, for you, I, I'm underweight if anything. Yeah. I think all of us There's... except Jackson have been like overweight or I, I eat healthy. a lot too. I, I don't quite understand. Uh, How old are you? I am onto it. I am 21 almost. Oh my God. You're going to be fat in like six years. You're going to be fucking massive. <laughs> Take That's that. that. It's, he cursed I'm 21 you. years old. I don't understand why I'm skinny. You'll be fat one day. Jackson, don't he's cursed that. you. That's it. It's set in stone. Why would you do that? The I'm just written. telling you the facts, bro. You got to be prepared. You Jackson, have to be prepared. You're young and naive. You'll believe anything since you were born yesterday. What he's saying, it's a myth. It's fat logic. Metabolism doesn't change that much. Don't, don't worry about it, man. Yeah, just keep eating. Am I going to be okay, deep, Kyle? Jackson, you'll, keep you'll eating be your okay. deep fried Mars bars. You'll be okay. <laughs> you know, the, so skin, the skinny guys who are like, man, I'm so skinny and I eat whatever I want. You, These are the guys who are at the biggest risk of becoming morbidly obese. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, no, I eat a normal amount. I don't overeat. If, I'm just if kidding. But one day you will realize that. Ethan, you've scared me. I'm just, you, got, you have to be aware. I'm just saying you've got to face life with a realistic outset. And one day, in about five or six years, you're gonna, you, it's, things are going to change for you, man. What do I do then? You just got to eat less. <laughs> well, or take a walk. <laughs> I don't know. Do I eat, I, do you're I, asking the wrong guy, man. All I know is that you're going to get fat one day. Do I eat less now? Do I just preemptively eat less? Would that no, 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 no. Start no, no, now. No. no, enjoy your life now. It doesn't matter. Now you're good. I don't want to get fat. All right. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to get fat and then have to lose fat. I'd rather just not get fat. It's like so a boogie man now. Yeah. One day you realize that you got a couple extra folds, and then that will be <laughs> nature's way of telling you that it's time to fucking. Get my neck action. is fat. I've got a. I've got a fat neck, Ethan. It like started. If I push my head back. Be careful, <laughs> Jackson. Like, it's spreading. Like there's like frog. six chins there. Yeah, there's like six chins. It's cool. You should. You should probably stop eating if that's the case. Eat really? tight entirely. I'm, I'm just kidding. Jackson, let me, Jackson, what do you notice in common about every single fat person on earth? They <laughs> eat. They smell. No, they eat. they eat. If you stop eating now, you won't have this problem. There. The end. No, no, I'm just going to get anorexic, though. It's like so? the opposite problem. Have you seen a fat anorexic, Jackson? <laughs> so this, hang on, this ties in into our next question. Ooh. Our patron, I'm not upset. He's asking, Ethan, what's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Strangest thing I've ever eaten. Mm. Either what's the strangest thing we've ever eaten? Have any of us 
Have any of us here ever tasted cum? I know I haven't, for sure. But have you guys? I haven't. <laughs> that's, that's I sure <laughs> haven't tasted cum before. That's awfully never, suspicious, never. Jax. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like to believe you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Maybe that's of- why I'm so skinny. I just live off cum. <laughs> What's the strangest thing we've eaten, Mila? It wasn't suspicious at all. I haven't... Uh, I, d- I don't know that I've eaten anything strange. Um, oh, bullshit. I don't know what to tell you, man. I, I've never, I, I wouldn't lie about it. All right. So Let's no cum or no poo poo? Even if I, first of all, this is an admission, but <laughs> even if I had just like taken a shit out of the toilet and taken a bite, I would probably wouldn't ta- tell you about it. Why not? That's how I, that's well, how I feel that's about a, a lot of giveaway. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, now why? Okay, I I've, kn- I've knelt in front of my toilet and grabbed a piece of shit out and took a little nibble. Finally, <laughs> the truth comes out. <laughs> we knew it. How old were you? <laughs> well, that's, a, that's an interesting I thing think to. I think it was. It's just a couple of days ago, man. That's always Ooh, an interesting so thing to think on, though. Like, how much fucked up or weird shit people have done, and you'll just never know because they'll never tell you. Yeah. Well, that's like, why... I- who cares? <laughs> well, God, the well, I FBI care. For one. Close the case on that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, discussion over. Who cares? I well, mean, it's, it's entirely different if, like, two consenting adults do something weird behind closed doors. Well, no, but, like, Jackson, like let's, murdering let's children. Use- yeah, like, let's use this whole thing as an example. What if you were, like, a serial rapist and murderer, and we just yeah, never what knew? if? <laughs> <laughs> just, once again, I've never tasted my gum, or any gum, for that matter. Just for the record, guys, right here, right now, you know, I always like to think, I think that being crazy is, like, that crazy isn't really, th- I think everyone's insane and just trying to act normal. And so you can't really ever tell, like, what's sane or what's crazy because we're all a little bit insane and just trying to pretend like we're totally normal. Yeah, all right, Joker, calm down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was Madness like a, bat, just a Batman away. script. Yeah. <laughs> all it takes is a I'm waiting push. for the day where, where I feel confident enough where I'll tell stories about when I was in like high school, early college that I've never said out loud. Like I think Jeez, about them constantly. what a tease. You may as well oh, do you, it now. Can Come you on. give us one? Give us a preview. Well, no, they're all like really, they're, they're still like fresh, well, not fresh wounds, because I'm like, uh, Come on. Some, give us one. Invo- okay, well, hold on. Give us one. Give us a little bit. Did, did this involve just yourself or other people? Oh, it's always other people. Like everything I do okay. by my, well, I guess there's, oh God, uh, I, I, I can tell one, but it, only if everyone else tells something super embarrassing they've never said out loud. Ethan, this will be groundbreaking stuff. Prepare something. Ugh, oh, man, I can't. Hmm. Come on, Ethan. He's he's putting himself on the line for you. Really? Putting him down? No, I'm not. I I, I don't. I, I they, come on. This isn't therapy, you guys. We're all just trying to shoot the shit. <laughs> no, it is. Oh, it sounds <laughs> like someone's chickening out. <laughs> he's got. He's well, got listen, a bad I, one. I, I, no, well, I don't want to disappoint. I don't know what I, I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't. Yeah. All right, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll leave you to last. We'll we, leave you yeah, to last. Though. Well, we can just we can just move on. No, 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 no. Charlie, I want to hear you. Charlie, I've got some yours. I'll, I'm, I've got I'm, something. I don't have anything more embarrassing than I'm a poster. Not, I'll tell him about that if you like. Most embarrassing thing. Okay, I guess I have one that's pretty embarrassing oh, yeah. that I can okay. tell. Okay, Charlie, Lead go us. first. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah, Charlie, you're going first. I, mine's just more sad than anything. Like, there's one that I constantly think about. Well, constantly is the wrong word, but it's one of those things where if I'm in a really good mood, it'll cross my mind and man, my day's <laughs> Man, I hate shit like that. Yeah, it's just like yeah. one of those things. It's like a day ruiner. <laughs> like, yep, that was me at one point. And yeah. It was, uh, it must have been like sophomore year of high school, somewhere in that ballpark, and I, I was watching porn, and I've talked about this on the podcast, where porn watching with me back in my huge OCD days was like a fucking song and dance. I had like a whole script that I had to follow. Hmm. Tell me about it. Just well, uh, I, give, give me the Reader's Digest, because pe- listeners yeah. have heard it. So, basically, I'd watch the same video night after night. night it was really? called Nice Pair of Lesbians, Rest in Peace. It's not on the internet in good quality anymore. And, you know, if the video would play, there'd have to be certain marks where I'd have to make a facial expression at, like, X time in the video. Oh, stuff wow. Like that. Okay. But there was one particular bad night. I don't even know if it was, like, during this time when, it was, when I was doing that ordeal. But I had a really bad jerk-off experience. Hmm. And it, I had to miss school the next day because I was inconsolable. <laughs> I was <just laughs> so incredibly... You, you had, dis- like, PTSD. Well... It's more so I got like the whole family involved in oh, like, no. how ang- wow. like how upset I was and like I needed to be comforted. 
And I was talking to a girl at the time, talking in quotation marks because she was just humoring me because I was a sad kid in high school. <laughs> and I told her about it. <laughs> oh. And oh. and I totally burnt that bridge. Like I told her, like I I was jerking off, <laughs> and it didn't go as planned. And like my parents were trying to help me, and it wasn't working. So I oh her. man! <laughs> like it was a shoulder to cry oh. on. What happened? Well, needless to say, there was no reply. But what happened? She came right like, over. How and did helped. it go? How did it go so fatally wrong? <laughs> what do you mean your parents helped? Well, like, they were telling me it's not a big deal and stuff. Like, it's just, you know, it happens, I guess. You happens to me too, champ. Yeah, it's just Ooh. one of those things. What happened? It was a long time ago. I don't know exactly what went wrong, but I think it was it was one of, like, the times where I was experimenting with using headphones and listening to porn instead of just speaker audio. So I was getting, like, real deep surround sound, and I heard, like, a man grumbling in the background, and it just really threw me out of the mood, and I missed, I missed my mark. It was your dad video. behind you making sure you were okay. Like it was like someone clearing their throat. <laughs> yeah, it was just something that didn't belong in the video Go get at him, all. Son. Like it was just one of those things, man. It to was be like fair, sp- I absolutely yeah. hate it when that happens in porn. Yeah, I hate that. God, shit. you so were using your, your speakers that entire time, so your parents could hear you listening. To well, no, they, they they had already gone to bed and stuff. I do it at night. I wasn't I wasn't that bad. <laughs> so you so wake them this up. Was, this was, I put on, yeah, I put on my con. blaringly loud surround sound porn after they went to bed. It was fine. Wait, wait. So what happened? I just still don't understand. I, I was inconsolable. I couldn't sleep. I was crying <laughs> profusely. No, but what happened? Your dad walked in or something? Oh, no. Nobody walked in. I, I chased them down once my jack-off session went wrong. I was like, I need help. It's all, it's all okay, over. Okay. It, like oh. it was just like an OCD thing? Oh, yeah. It was really bad. But like, I okay. brought in the girl that was humoring me by talking to me as like a, someone to help me. Man, that's like a really unrelatable problem. Yeah, I think I think the girl thing is more normal than like seeking down your parents and trying to get them to help you. I don't think under any circumstances. This is just a little pro tip for all listeners out there. If you're talking to a girl and your jack off session goes wrong, don't don't bring her into it for help. I think that's just sage advice. That's just a rule to live by. Yeah, I'm I, I'm I'm curious how since then because you said like your OCD's gotten better. What what happened? In, like how did you you know improve your quality of life? Well, gradually, I it started with small things. Like I had like these massive rituals. The porn one being a big one, but I, I just start chipping away at them. Like, okay, I'll miss a I'll miss a facial expression at six minutes into the porn mm. video this time, and then it started translating into okay, I don't need to wash my hands if I touch my ear, stuff like that. Because mm. hmm. that's that's so, <laughs> way overblown. It wasn't that so, bad, but to that uh, degree. <clears throat> over the course of time, you just kind of like mm-hmm. willed your way to improvement. Yeah, just little by little. That's in, that's that's kind of uh, it took a twist for like an encouraging twist there. Well, I hope no one has like a, a porn schedule script. I I would wish that curse on no man. But if you are, if you do, or you do have bad rituals, you can fucking overcome it, become a cool ass dude just like you. Oh, that was sweet. Aww. Your turn, Ethan. How many times have you cried to Ela about your bad jerk offs? <laughs> I haven't cried to Ela about my bad jerk offs, but um, well, this one. Uh, This one's pretty embarrassing. It happened actually as an adult. I think I must have been like, oh man, I must have been like 23 years old or something. I went to Vegas with my family. I love playing poker. And we were all sharing a hotel room. And I was down, I was sick. I had like the fever or food poisoning or something. And I was down playing poker and I was killing it, man. I didn't want to leave even though I was sick and I felt like I had to shit. Mm-hmm. But I was just, I was doing really good. You know, I was having a great run there. I was up a couple hundred bucks and it just, it was getting like, man, I just had to cash out cause I really needed to shit. And I, I had already pushed it way too long. And so I take the elevator up. I'm in the hallway. I'm wearing like gym shorts, something like that. Cause it's summer and I'm sick. I'm, I've got a fever and I'm walking back to the hotel room and I, you know, got a little fucking fart going on there. And sure enough, man, that warm, lava starts not only did it like not only did i shit my pants but it started dripping down my leg oh, in the hole yeah in the hallway running down my leg Oof. like all the way down my leg and i'm walking to pass and i'm did walking you have to past, clean it up uh i i don't i don't think it ever hit the ground it was just kind oh, of okay. like a slow crawling lava you know yeah you know um yeah. 
And so I'm just walking down the hallway. People are walking past me and sh- I mean, you know, there's shit down my leg and I smell like a f- smell like I shit my pants. I go into the <laughs> I go into the hotel room. My brother's in the bathroom showering. I'm like, Sean, my brother's name is Sean. I'm like, Sean, you need to get out right now. I just shit my pants. And he, of course, being my sweet brother, took his time, you know. <laughs> Really let you fester in it. <clears throat> yeah, he let me. F- I don't know. Is that that good? I shit my pants as a grown man. I've so, shit my pants uh, as a fourteen-year-old boy. How did you wipe? That well, that <laughs> was a sh- that, well, that was a shower experience. That was there. There was no wiping involved there. That was definitely a shower moment. Did you destroy that shower? I mean, yeah, I definitely dropped a couple chunks and pushed it down with my toes. Ooh, waffle stuff. No, I'm kidding. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Yeah, he picked them up and ate them. Yeah, I thought that I thought that was a good moment to uh, to give it a taste, you know. Make sure you're healthy. What about you, Andrew? What's your most embarrassing story that you have never so, told? So this one is hazy. I don't remember all the details because I was in fifth grade. Um, I went to an after school <coughs> summer camp. Uh, one of those, like literally, like after school that you get on the bus and then you hang out there until you know your parent picks you up. And they would do like trips to the roller rink or the arcade or whatever and whatever. So it was after school. And uh, so I distinctly remember, okay, this was fourth grade. Yeah. So fourth grade, <laughs> back back when I was a wee youngster, and I'm sure you guys all relate to this, the, uh, the common insult at the time was uh, gay. Everything was gay. Like, you're gay. Yes. That game is gay. This is gay. Everything is gay. That. Everything that was... You know, any insult ever. Everything was gay. Oh, yeah. so gay. The golden days. So The old good old days. So me yes. and two of the friends that I had made there at the summer camp decided that, like, we, we kind of got bullied. Not intensely, but, you know, like, we weren't very popular or cool or whatever. So we decided the ultimate comeback to being called gay was to just pretend we were gay. <laughs> <laughs> now this thing, this, this this didn't this didn't I'll lead suck his to, dick right now. This didn't lead to like any inappropriate like child shit. Like we ne- like I didn't fuck him or kiss him or anything. None of that. But like if if, if, if none of that gay if, shit. Well, but if we were like sitting on the bus and someone was like, "Oh, don't, look at those guys, they're gay," we'd be like, "Yeah, we're gay. Yeah, I'm so gay." Yeah, ha, huh, we're gay, whatever. And it, it became like this kind of persona, I guess. I don't know. Like, not, not, <laughs> not flame. That's when he became gay. I mean, like, it's however much being gay is understood by fourth graders. You know what I mean? It wasn't. We, I think that's very progressive, bro. We you were like a, you were an early adopter, man. We weren't yeah. super like flamboyant, but literally it was like, yeah, we're gay. We like dicks. Like, literally, it was just, <laughs> it, it's all, it was just bullshit. Um, it so, sounds like you so went that, out of your way for detail there. Oh, oh ba- let me tell you. Sometimes when people weren't even make fun of us, we'd be just be like, "We're gay." Don't forget. Um, so that, that's, maybe that's, that's why you were bullied. Uh, it, it it's literally a chicken and egg kind of thing. It's like I don't know what how it started or which way it went. But anyway, so, <laughs> you don't know how it started. So this, just one day you decided to say that you were gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I said, this was fourth grade. I don't remember the whole thing, but I distinctly remember being on like the bus going to different field trips and just being like, I'm gay. He's gay. I'm gay. <laughs> anyway, um, so the, the climax, the culmination of the story, the whole the whole embarrassing moment is uh, so then fifth grade rolls around and I'm enrolled in the same uh, after school program, the same uh, whatever the fuck it is, the same. I don't want to call it daycare, but whatever. And uh, <laughs> I, I literally am blanking on what they're called. Uh, so aftercare. Aftercare. Yeah, right? yeah after, the same aftercare. So I pull up and it's fifth grade and it's like the first day of school. So it's my first day being there. And both of my friends who had joined in on me on the whole I'm gay thing were not there. They they just were not part of the program anymore. So I, I tried to like make new friends and I'm alone by myself. And like the first two groups of kids I try to hang out with, I'm just like, hey, I'm gay. Oh, <laughs> and immediately just, it as a day, just day one it's like a whole new year a whole thing like that this whole has no context to it or yeah, anything you can't be <laughs> gay on your own either exactly that loses I, all coolness you I, have a no one, I have no one to <laughs> back me up so I just immediately just became this awkward fucking loser to this huge group of kids what if someone called your bluff day. like yeah suck us off then 
Well, I, thankfully, like I dropped it and about a week later, everyone forgot about it. And I actually did make friends in that year. But I distinctly remember like fourth grade. I just the whole year I had two friends and the whole our whole shtick was we're gay. Ah, you can't. Come Wait, there were two there. friends. It was two. Diff- yeah, it was two. Fr- I had two friends and we all played Pokemon. Oh, you got around. Well, <laughs> I distinctly remember also I stole one of their Krabbies when trading uh, Pokemon. But that doesn't matter. The whole point is, uh, in our minds, it was like, you can't call us gay if we say we're gay. Ha ha, we beat you. And yeah. Was there ever any parental intervention where they're like, do you know what that means? Oh, the counselors didn't give a shit. Um, The only time they would ever step in with stuff like that is if, you know, if you were a kid, it was something like that. Like if, if someone said that's so gay and a counselor overheard it, they'd be like, do you know what gay means? Or, you know, don't like say it like that. But they, our whole spiel, they never stepped in and said anything. Yeah, that's another. Tu- I think that's another touching, beautiful uh, story. I mean, what a what a what a oh. early adopter. What a what a rights. Yeah. You're was, fighting for human rights. He was yeah. gay, and now he's not. So inspirational. <laughs> I care. All right, I care. let's continue the trend. Kaya, what's your heartwarming story? Well, yeah. Well, well, what's, well, what's yours, Jackson? You're next on the list. Uh, no, I'll go. I'll go last. All right, I mean, fine. that's fine. I, I mean, I, I'm afraid I don't have anything better than the poster. Is that fine? No, don't tell that again. We, we've talked about that a lot. No. There's got to be something, Kaya. Not really. That's the most embarrassing I've done. Um, yeah, I don't know. Jesus Christ. Guy, you're like an actual amnesiac who forgot everything <laughs> prior to high school. <laughs> and the poster. He knows the poster. May as well just give a, just tell him a short poster. summary of the poster. I mean, but, yeah, it was going to be for Ethan anyway. Ethan, do you know about the poster? No, I don't. Well... If you go to a Patreon, it's a five fifty thousand dollar tier. You can subscribe to. It's actually a legacy tier now. Nobody else has fifty thousand dollar tiers. Uh, it's oh, a poster wow, okay. that all throughout my <laughs> childhood, first well not all but like for several years, I would just come on. So it, it's a jizz. You were doing poster. a cum tribute. Yeah, to a cheetah poster. Um, let me check this out. So wait, <laughs> there's, there's, he wants there's photographic no, Are you evidence. an interest? Are you an interested buyer? It's. I mean, this is historical. I mean, this sounds rare. It is a, actually. It's it is a, a rare a issue of. It's a rare issue of National Geographic. Believe it or not, the Colorado. poster alone is worth like two grand. So no, it isn't. At, well, oh. I, at some oh. point, I, I tracked down it. the original line of the series of the poster series, which I don't know. I forgot their name again, but I saw it online for another issue of the same series for two hundred dollars. And we're selling it for fifty thousand bucks, that which means my jizz adds a value of forty nine thousand and eight hundred yeah, dollars. So, well, that's the value you're giving it. It doesn't get that value until someone buys it, it for that. Value. It wasn't appraised or anything, and how many? That value. And how many loads are on it approximately? <laughs> oh, I, um, God, I don't know. Like when you first start jacking off, you do it like ten times a day, probably a lot. Sure, at least. I don't know. I, I'm looking forward to cloning you, my dude. I'd send you uh, photos, but I don't. I don't want to dig them out again. He's he's got like photos that he sends to like the occasional interested party. <laughs> oh my god, I'm not that interested, so it's fine. It's 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 a lot. Le- There's a mixed reviews on it. In my opinion, it's a lot less than you would expect. Like it's not caked on, and the only time you can ever really see like the the DNA on there is on a certain angle where you can see it's a few layers above the page. But otherwise, if you're just looking at it, it just looks glazed. Like well, that laminated. makes it. I think that makes it perfect for display because exactly, yeah, the collector's item. <laughs> it's yeah. beautiful. You could hang it in a museum. Go look at this poster, and everybody can actually tell what it is. It's a cheetah. But then you t- tell them, take a closer look at the brush strokes on this <laughs> right. modern piece. It's like of one art. of those. It's one of those things where you have to rest your eyes, and all of a sudden you see a fucking child's <laughs> jizz. Exactly. <laughs> is it like a an rabbit? optical illusion? Is it a duck? <laughs> is it cum? <laughs> what about you, Jackson? What's your thing? Alright, so I'm gonna level with you. Uh, I actually have tasted my own cum. <laughs> oh, oh, what a plot twist! <laughs> Whoa! I can't believe it! Oh, I didn't see that coming. What the fuck? I'm not even mad. I'm not disgusted. I'm mad that you lied to me. It's out of the blue. I know. So, it wasn't on purpose or anything. I was just jacking off, basically. And you know when you come and you're still in the process of jacking off and you kind of like fling the cum, kinda? And it flung up into my mouth, basically. Like, I had a surprised expression because the porn was that good or whatever. The and then the addiction the started. Coming. Have you ever I'm... told this story publicly? No. Wow, this Why? is exciting. This is groundbreaking. 
So, uh, so you know, when you're when you're finishing, Kaya, you're still kind of like pumping away, and oh, it just kind of oh, flung yeah. up. You mean doing? Yeah, it yeah. Just, yeah, it just kind of flung up and into my mouth, and I, it was in there, so the damage was What's... done. So I thought I may as well just taste it. Wow! I don't understand how it got to your mouth. Like, even if you're pumping away, oh, it got everywhere. Fucking... It got everywhere. <laughs> oh, okay, because it's not like a he fucking been, rail gun or he'd something. He'd been edging for no. It days. wasn't. It wasn't precise. It wasn't like just in my mouth. It was like all over my chest. Wait, are you are you face. are you doubting the that there's enough pressure or that he doesn't have that much to aim? It was more so the aim. It made it sound like a precision sniper okay, shot. Okay, okay. No, I, I, I said I didn't do it on purpose. This was completely by accident. Completely by accident. And <laughs> you I would never do it again. shotgunned it. Nice. Yeah. No, it went everywhere. It was all over the pillow. I must have like been edging for days or something because it was such a big load. And so Edging like, for days. <laughs> put that I like how you're swooning. Like, it was such a load. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> oh, <classic laughs> if I could go back to those days, this is when I was like fourteen too, so it was like one of the first times I ever masturbated. All right, yeah, we've we've uh, we've, we've, we've spent we spent a lot of time talking about semen during this episode. It's an important topic. just the podcast in general, really. Generally, it's a big theme of the podcast, eh? It's yeah. just we shoot the shit here, Ethan. I don't know, <laughs> right? I don't know why right, it right. Comes up. Well, Ethan, just, just boys, so just a couple boys <laughs> chatting. <laughs> yeah, locker room We're talk. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, Ethan. Lonely is yep. asking, can you give us any good tips on how to run a good podcast? Well, you guys, you guys don't need tips. You guys don't need much tips. Oh. Um, if you're talking about general, general notes, I mean, we've learned a lot from from the beginning of of when we start. The biggest thing on a personal note that I've learned is that as the host, and, and because what well, what I do is different from what you guys do, because your guys' theme is just like a couple of guys just chit chatting, but my thing is more of like an interview, like a one-on-one interview. And something that was really hard for me to learn that took me a while is that I just need to shut the fuck up and listen to let, listen way, way, way more. Like my, my initial impulse was like, people are listening and they want to hear me talk and be entertaining. But I just ended up trying way too hard to be funny or, or interrupting the guest. And it was, um, it was really hard to overcome that impulse, um, but for me, that's the most valuable thing I've learned in, in a one-on-one interview situation is just shutting up and being okay not talking, right? Just listening. That's probably my, my biggest takeaway from, from doing a podcast. We, we have the same trouble. We interrupt guests all the time. Uh, maybe it's because we don't treat this as an interview per se, like, like you treat your show. It's just five friends sometimes fucking around. So I don't know. There's a lot less pressure on actually uh listening to yeah well I we still we still listen but i don't know we just have fun with it I don't, I don't know what else to say about it i think the expectation is different with with what you guys do i mean we do you also- like us have you enjoyed this experience i've had so much fun you guys we've we've talked about uh so much we've covered so much ground man i'm just the important I'm, stuff. I'm, yeah all the important stuff lots of jizz lots of semen I'm going to go try my jizz and I'm going to go wipe my ass from the front. Man, I've, this has been a total blast. <laughs> All right. Well, we, can, we, can, uh, we can start wrapping up. No, no. Uh, I, I still have a couple of questions here. Hang on a minute. Oh, yeah. What do you got? Oh, uh, let's see. That other guy is asking, if you could sucker punch anyone you wanted from all throughout history, who would you punch and why? The one person I would say I can't say because of, uh, I can't say. <laughs> maybe you can read between maybe you can read between the lines, but I can't say. Okay, I think I, think I know who. <laughs> I I wouldn't even I wouldn't say it publicly because there's just it wouldn't be worth it. Uh, okay, who's somebody you can say publicly? I can't. I'm not. I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> you just want to punch. I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> there's one person in particular, Ela. If if you could suck or punch one person, she knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> It's a, I think I know it, who you're talking about. It, I'm sorry. It sounds like a loaded question. If you could suck or punch somebody. A suck or punch? Suck oh. or punch. <laughs> One or the other. Oh, man. If I could suck or punch, <clears throat> I'd definitely punch this guy. You wouldn't suck him? <laughs> All right. Maybe punch, then suck. I mean, the question <laughs> is kind of weird. Dude. It's, I, I don't think anybody throughout history would expect a time traveler to come and punch them. It's oh, is it a time travel regardless. thing? Well, yeah, yeah, you can punch anyone. Yeah. I, I don't need a time. Tra- I don't need a travel machine to sucker punch this guy. Vince McMahon, <laughs> I, I just gotta make a decision. 
So that's it. I can't say his name. Otherwise, <laughs> right. it'll okay. be bad news. Fair enough. But I think hopefully enough people know who I'm talking about. I think I know who you're talking well, about. Well, the, yeah. the comment section off the recording anyway. will be full mm-hmm. of guesses now. Yeah. It's PewDiePie. Fuck that guy. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He's a great guy. Love him. Okay, so this I'd is suck him. from <laughs> Meme. And Meme, I like this. This is a moderator in our Discord. He regularly posts selfies with his poo in the background. He's asking... Oh, God. <laughs> what... <laughs> What would you do if a fairy turned you into the opposite sex for a week? You would look like a hypothetical rel- relative of yourself. You cannot get pregnant. Wait, I would look like myself? A uh, relative of yourself, like a female relative. What would I do? I mean, yeah, I'd probably put shit up my vag, dude. <laughs> Ew. Well, well then you're really back wiping front. back to front. God damn it. That's so gay. That's so gay. Yeah, that's really gay, <laughs> Ethan. What else am I supposed to say? Have a period and put a tampon in and see what that's like. Is that all that women are to you, Ethan? <laughs> go, go kiss a boy. Well, that's really the no, but that's really the only difference, right? Is that they have periods and have a vagina. I'm so I would pretty. With Ethan. I think that question. I would do everything awful. the same. That question's always would, horseshit. It's always just I would go fuck. Like that's that question. Because is terrible. That, that's the expectation. Because, yeah. yeah, you'd yeah, be looking to fuck guys, wouldn't you, Andrew? Oh man, I could fuck more <laughs> guys than you could, Jackson. Everything's the same. I would be the same, except instead of putting a dick in shit, I would take a dick in my fucking vagina. That a boy. Yeah. Well, and I would be, yeah. Anyway, I was gonna make a me too joke, but I prefer not even touch that. <laughs> <laughs> are, there, are there any last questions, Kyle? Uh, um, sure. Have you ever th- this is from Teach? Have you ever thought about taking the H three podcast on the road, like on uh, on a stage oh. or a panel? <laughs> That's a good yeah. question. Yeah, I do think about that a lot. Um, taking it on the road is so much work and it's so exhausting. One thing we're work- thinking about doing now that I'm actually really excited about that I'm I'm actually talking with our agent and seeing if it's possible is having like a residency in L.A. So once a month we can do a live show in L.A. And at the same like theater or venue and then so we don't have to travel. So we just do one live show every month in the same place. It's like a residency. I think it would be yeah, a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah, that sounds like a good that idea. Sounds like a, a good, good idea. solution. Yeah, that, yeah. Because well, it would be really stay tuned for. Yeah, it would, it would be really fun to go and meet fans and say what up and hang out with people. This is so, a different atmosphere than recording in your bedroom alone. If you well, he doesn't yeah. do that. He has a, he has a studio. We, no, we record well, in our bedroom alone. <laughs> we do have a studio, but it is, it would be a completely different experience for sure. Like being in front of a live audience would be would be really. A exhilarating someone it would be a thrill my dude all right uh, i i uh, had one uh, more question before we wrap unless you had one well we can uh, ask i have both. one more but you you go first okay i was just gonna ask ethan you've kind of become this beacon of hope for smaller <laughs> channels on youtube and i was wondering what kind of advice you would give to up-and-comers who want to break out on the platform and do youtube yeah um well first and foremost is like you have to care You have to want it so passionately that like anything I say or anyone ever says will never dissuade or change your mind or affect you at all. Like, I mean, if you're looking for tips or advice or motivation, you're you're all going to want it so bad that anything I say is not going to matter. Like you have Mm -hmm. to care about it that much and be so focused on it that it doesn't even matter. You have to like it took us a year to even get a thousand subscribers because it takes time to develop your sense of humor and your point of view and, and your style. It really takes that long, in my opinion, to develop something meaningful, some kind of identity for, for what you do. So like, I mean, you just got to keep slamming. You got to keep pushing. You don't get discouraged. And once you have a vision and once you know what you want to do and once you can kind of understand where you want to be, then just fucking don't give up, man. Just do it. You'll get better at it. And it takes time, you know? Just gotta just gotta do it. And you I mean like you basically gotta eat shit and breathe YouTube, right? I mean more more or less, but I mean that advice is applicable to any to anything that you wanna do that's highly competitive. Um like this whole thing with the partner program with all these people getting outraged because they can't make five dollars a month anymore. It's like <laughs> I mean, what I, I, I try not to be sensitive because I, I know people are really upset about it. And I'm sure if at, at the time I got an email that said I was dropped, I would have been really sad by it. But to say that it actually discourages you, if anyone says that that actually discourages them from pursuing 
their goals and dreams of being an entertainer, then, I mean, they were never destined to make it anyway because we made $100 in our first year. Any YouTuber who's made it can tell you, like, that any all that time is absolutely meaning. The money that you'll lose is absolutely meaningless. It doesn't matter at all. I mean, you just, like, it does, in the scheme of things, like, it's absolutely um, insignificant. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, last question, then. And this I from, think that's good advice, by the way. I'm oh, just yeah, gonna, definitely. I agree. Thank, Eating thank, shit hey. and breathing YouTube, very important. Stop yeah, crying yeah. about $1 a month. Jesus. Um, Kickstart is asking, is this the first time someone will be coming on the podcast to defend themselves? This man has a lot of explaining to do for ignoring Charlie's DMs. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh. Well, here I am, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I defend yourself even. About that, actually. <laughs> yeah, explaining. defend yourself. Do it. I think I did in DMs. Charlie was like, hey, he kept sending me these really beautiful, loving <laughs> DMs. And I, and, I, and I didn't want them to stop. I didn't want him to stop. So I, I was afraid if I answered that he would, he would stop DMing me. And I told him eventually, I was like, hey, man, I'm reading these. I just, I just love waking up to these every day. That, I, that I, I'm afraid that if I said anything, you'd stop doing it. It's abusive. <laughs> that's, that's so beautiful. That's what I like to imagine that girl that I cried to about my bad jerk off thought as well. It was so beautiful. She just wanted more. Um, that's, yeah, that's definitely what she thought, dude. I'm sure of it. No doubt. All right, we can start to wrap up now. We're at that one hour 30 mark, and we usually wrap up around here. Plug anything you want, Ethan. Upcoming tour, big songs coming out, diss tracks maybe. <laughs> check out... Um, check out... Uh, <laughs> I, I think we actually I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You can bleep that. Yeah. that. I'm kidding. I, I know you had to cut that. You can cut that. All right, let's, so let's, let's get a good lead in so we can edit it. Wow, what a great racial <laughs> slur, Ethan. I've never heard that one before. Anyway, feel free to plug whatever you want. Listen, my friends, I, I just think that I love the podcast. I love what you guys do. Charlie, I've been such a huge fan of yours. I think you're probably, I think you might be the funniest guy, one of the funniest guys on YouTube, I'm, I've been a huge fan of yours since even before we had subscribers. So it's a thrill and a joy to be here with you guys. I had a ton of fun. I got nothing to plug. Support these guys on Patreon. Let them keep doing their thing. And I'm about to go hop on over there and drop a fiver right on the goddamn table for you wonderful guys. You know, well, that, was, just sweet, huh? yeah, that was about the if sweetest you got sign out plug, from anyone. If you got nothing to plug, would you care to plug uh, the actual link to the Patreon? <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. It is, it. Uh, <laughs> here, let's see. Whoa. Patreon, the official. It's the dick. Oh, that's not you guys. That's not the Whoa. Why you there? <laughs> <laughs> Patreon. What the fuck? We are friends with uh, them, but they are yeah. not us. No. Well, you. You guys may guess that it is patreon.com slash the official podcast. That's right. Mm-hmm. And I do appreciate that you guys don't hide your dollar amount either. Oh, do people hide I, the dollar amount? I didn't even know that was an option. Yeah. A lot of people started. Uh, we had a Patreon back like in the early days of our channel. And before then, you didn't have an option to hide it. And I mean, it's everyone's prerogative. I don't really may, mean to lay serious criticism against anyone a lot of people do it but i just think i like the transparency yeah i prefer transparency as well. i mean at the end of the day regardless we do this for fun at the very base matter of fact of it so you you guys are i mean you guys all should be making a living but from it by now with the spots and stuff like enough for all all of you guys oh, yeah, buy, yeah, sure. no, yeah. that's yeah, awesome uh, that's fucking bro that's so sick dude god bless the internet yeah if we can give a quick hug and kiss to our fans both jackson and myself used to work like full nine to five jobs and we both had the pleasure of quitting that to focus on podcasts. man congratulations that's awesome good job guys i I didn't hear hila clap (laughs) hila can you get hila congratulate them would you please congratulations by the way (laughs) Hi, I'm a big fan of all you guys. Oh, <laughs> that's so nice. She, she so can't so hear sweet. you guys, but uh, they were they were just pining over your comment. Yeah, that was that's sweet. so sweet. <laughs> yeah, tell her we're we're a big fan of her as well. They say they're big fans. We love what you two do. We we do <laughs> no no bullshit like no bullshit. We do love what you guys do on YouTube. Thanks, man. Thank you, dudes. Appreciate it a lot. All right, thank you, everyone who's watched this episode. Go check out Ethan and Ella at H3H3 the, for the two people in our audience that haven't <laughs> already. Go go watch them. They're, they're great. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Yep, thanks we'll for see coming you next on. week. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.